If they win the election in June, the Conservatives say they'll curb immigration to tens of thousands. They'll pledge to protect schools in England from any losses from a new funding formula, but free school meals for infants would be axed. And they would commit to a new social care plan. Winter fuel allowance would now be means tested. And for the first time, the cost of someone's house would be taken into account in assessing whether they should qualify for state support to pay for home care. We can speak to the Health Secretary, Jeremy Hunt, who joins us from West Yorkshire right now. Very good morning to you. Thank you for your time this morning. Uh, so we have a few glimpses morning, of a couple of things in the manifesto, some of them directly linked to uh, social care. Can you just take us through, uh, number one, the winter fuel allowance. Uh, the change is there. Who will still get the winter fuel allowance? Well, uh, I, I will do that. But first of all, can I just say that what we're going to hear today is Theresa May's plan to make Britain work better for ordinary working families. And one of their biggest concerns is the complexity in the social care system, which uh, for many people is very baffling and bewildering. Uh, and what we're saying is that everyone will have the security of knowing that they can pass on £100,000 to their children and grandchildren. At the moment, you can be cleaned out to as little as £23,000, so that's four times more. And the reason that that matters to people is because many grandparents worry that uh, the standard of living of their children and grandchildren may actually be less than their own, and so they want to be able to pass on those savings that they worked hard for all their life. So we are saying to pay for that there is a trade-off, and yes, on the winter fuel payment that will be available for the poorest pensioners, those at risk of going into fuel poverty, but not for other pensioners. OK, give us some more detail on that then, if you would. We'll come back to the other issue in connection with uh, uh, social care in just a moment. But the winter fuel allowance, I mean, what, what, the, what are the thresholds? Well, we are going to have a detailed consultation if we win the election. Um, but we are saying that um, it will uh, only be available for the poorest pensioners. Um, but what we're doing by saying that, making that difficult trade-off, is we're saying that everyone can be confident that they'll be able to pass on £100,000 to their children and grandchildren. That is four times more than is the case for people who are in care homes that are paid for by the state at the moment. So it's a, it's a big step forward, but we're being honest about the trade-offs. And if I may say, um, if you compare that to Tuesday, where Jeremy Corbyn is saying he's going to put up taxes by £48 billion, and that the only people who would notice anything are the top 5% of earners, when actually we know that that would destroy jobs for ordinary working families okay, up I'm and sorry, down I'm the country. I am just going to interrupt you there, because uh, one of the things you often complain about the, about your, the uh, Labour Party is their lack of detail. I mean, what I'm trying to establish for, on the, specifically on winter fuel, the, the winter fuel allowance, what, what are the numbers? I mean, why can't, why can't you tell us how much do you have to have in terms of assets, in terms of what, what you own, to be allowed to have the winter fuel allowance? Well, we're not going to give a, an exact number today. Um, we're saying there'll be a consultation after the election if we're successful. But we're being very straight that the winter fuel payment, which is now available to all pensioners, will only be available to the poorest pensioners, the people at risk of going into fuel poverty. It couldn't be more straight than that, but we're not going to okay. give the okay. exact cutoff so point you're not going today, to tell us, but, we, so but that will mean that OK, sorry to interrupt again, well, but we I'm, I'm, very, I'm very, very keen clear. to, it's to only push going to be available on. for the poorest pensioners. I'm very keen to push on with these numbers because this is important. So you can't tell us the actual number, the, 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 the amount of money you'd have to have to mean you didn't qualify. So can you tell us how many people will be caught up in this? What, what are the numbers of people who won't be getting the, the uh, winter fuel allowance? Because then we can add up the sums about how much money that you will save to then put into social care. OK, well, let, let me help you on that. So the, the cost of these measures, the cost of giving that security to every family in the country, uh, that they will be able to uh, pass on assets that they've worked hard to build up all their lives, at least £100,000, is around £2 billion a year. And that can be funded by restricting the winter fuel payment to the poorest pensioners, as I say, and also by simplifying the way that we do means testing for people who need state-funded social care. And you take those together, you raise this money. We're being very open that there is a trade-off. 
And if I may say, I think that is what Theresa May's leadership is about. She's saying that if we're going to make Britain work for ordinary working families, there are no panaceas, no silver bullets. There are difficult trade-offs. But if we do this, we will have a simpler, fairer system. And there's one other very big difference about our approach to social care. We are not funding improvements to social care by increasing taxes on younger working families, something that a lot of uh, older people worry about. Improve the social care by increasing, and we're saying actually we're going to do this by reducing entitlements for better off pensioners, uh, but actually that means that we can give all pensioners that security that they don't have at the moment where if uh, a husband or a wife gets dementia, ends up having to go into a care home paid for by the state, you can be cleaned out of absolutely everything by your last £23,000. We think that's an unfair system and we want to change that by introducing this new £100,000 that everyone can be certain of uh, passing on to their relatives. One of the stories we're featuring this morning is the report from uh, GPs uh, saying the the system is on the brink of collapse. Uh, the Tory mantra is strong and stable, but you have presided over a time when pledges in connection with ambulance times, for example, have been missed. Pledges from the last Tory manifesto on mixed sex wards, which were very specific, have not been met. You'll know that A&E waiting times those standards have not been met very recently, at the beginning of this year. So many of the pledges and bold proposals that the Tories put forward to us in the last election have not been met. Why should we believe any of the pledges you're making now? Well, that is uh, not a, an accurate characterisation as what, of what's been happening in the NHS. We have more doctors, more nurses, more funding than ever before in the history of the NHS. You said you talked about the ambulance service. We're doing 2,000 emergency journeys every single day. Uh, in A&E departments, we're seeing around 2,000 more people within the four-hour target every day. We obviously have the pressures of an ageing population, um, and that has put, um, made it difficult to meet some of the key waiting times targets. But at the same time, you have an NHS with record cancer survival rates, the biggest expansion of mental health in Europe, the biggest improvement in stroke and heart attack survival rates of any OECD country. And you're seeing NHS staff working brilliantly well despite enormous pressure to deliver those improvements. The head of the NHS actually said a couple of months ago that in most major conditions, uh, outcomes are dramatically better than five years ago. So the overall picture of, is of an NHS that is doing more for more people than ever before but dealing uh, very valiantly and courageously with enormous pressure because we have around half a million more over 75s than we have in 2010 and that obviously creates pressure on the front line.